Hello boys and girls, Greg from the Scary Spirits Podcast here to make you another cocktail. Tonight's cocktail is called the Satanic Panic. And it is the feature drink in today's episode. I'm going to start. Highball glass with ice. To that, we're going to add one ounce dark rum. Like so. Next, we take our shaker with ice. We're going to put two ounces dark room, dark rum in the shaker. One ounce lime juice from the plastic line. Two ounces ginger syrup. There we go. Ginger syrup. A splash of grenadine. And a mint leaf. broken up. Now, let's do a couple. Then, we shake. And we strain on top of the on top of the dark rum. And there you have it, boys and girls. The Satanic Panic. Garnish with a lime wheel if you like. Not bad. Not bad at all. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the podcast. See ya. Babysitting and horror films. It's a match made in hell. And we love it. But don't you sometimes think the babysitter could use a little advice? Like if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Or hey, ask some questions. If they're paying you to watch Mother, ask if you can lay eyes on her to prove she actually exists. If your friend offers to stay with you, accept that generous offer. And when the money keeps rapidly escalating to get you to stay, on the night of an eclipse, be very suspicious. And finally, if the house is in the middle of nowhere, like this episode of the Scary Spirits podcast, The House of the Devil, just say no. Seriously, say no. Cheers. Welcome to the Scary Spirits podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So, if you're ready, let's go.
Hi, I'm Greg. Hey, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast, the podcast that combines the two very different but highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? I'm doing great. How are you, Greg? I'm good, Karen. I'm good. Thanks for asking. It's what we do. All right, Karen, I believe this week was my choice, was it? Was it not? It was your choice. So this week, Karen, my film selection is The House of the Devil from 2009. Why did you choose that? Well, The House of the Devil was released on October 30th, Karen, of 2009. It's a good release date. Right before Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. So celebrating the anniversary of its release, Karen. Did you see it in the theater? I did not. I don't even remember it. Do you? uh, it was it was kind of low budget, so it wasn't in many. Didn't oh, make a lot gotcha. of money in the theaters anyway. Had you heard about it before you decided to choose it, or did yes. you just okay? So you knew about it. Yes, thirteenth anniversary. What anniversary is that, Karen? Is that paper or something? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't know. I don't know. Whenever I'm asked what it is for the anniversary, I just say camera equipment. Pretty sure it's camera equipment. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yeah, prob- probably is. It is in this house. <laughs> so that would be lace, Karen. 13 is lace. Ooh, nice. Traditional. Modern is textiles or furs. So lingerie works for either one. <laughs> I guess. Textiles. Okay. You say so, Karen. I do have a drink as well, Karen. I knew you were wondering. And what would that be? That would be a drink I found on Reddit that somebody made called the Satanic Panic. Oh, how appropriate. (laughs) How do you make said drink? Google Satanic Panic sometime. It's a cocktail. (laughs) See what comes up, Karen. So we're going to need one ounce of lime juice, two ounces of ginger syrup, which you can make yourself very easily, like I did, Karen. It is good, too. Three ounces of dark rum. This is our second drink that had ginger syrup in it, actually. Um, Some grenadine and a mint leaf. Or two. Or three. Whichever. (laughs) Clucked fresh from your garden. Yep. Would you like to know how to make it, Karen? Absolutely. We're going to combine the lime, ginger syrup, two ounces of the rum, and grenadine as well as the mint leaf, into a shaker with ice. And then we're going to shake it, shake it, shake it, Karen. Gotcha. Which I did with ginger beer, which was a little bit of a mistake. Then we strain it over ice in a highball glass, into which we have already put one ounce of dark rum. That's where the three ounces comes in, Karen. Yes. Two plus one is three. Ha, 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 ha. You're the smart one. (laughs) Then you can garnish with a mint or lime wedge as you see fit, Karen. The satanic panic. Tasty. I like it. Should we give our listener time to make their own? Absolutely. You're going to need, how long does it take to make the simple syrup? About two hours. Okay. (laughs) Or just throw some ginger beer in there. Just don't put it in the shaker because it kind of explodes a little bit. (laughs) Hold on. And we're back. Yes, we are. Where did you watch this film, Karen? I watched it on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Did you watch the one with the ads or did you pay for the rental? I paid for it. So did I. But it started playing the ones with ads. It did. I had to stop it and go back and say, no, I said this one. Damn it. Yeah, I had to reload it. Yeah, so be careful. If you paid for it, reload the page and get what you paid for. Exactly. Because it did the same thing to me. Amazon trying to trick you. Might you have a brief synopsis of this film, Karen? I do. Want to hear a story? (laughs) Absolutely. Tell me a story, Karen, all about the house of the devil. Desperate to make some money so she can move into a new apartment, 
college student Samantha Hughes takes a mysterious babysitting job. When she arrives at the house, Mr. Ullman mentions a full lunar eclipse and explains there is no child, but that Samantha will be watching his mother instead. After exploring the sinister-seeming house, Samantha soon comes to realize that her employers are hiding a horrifying secret and have plans to use her, dead or alive. Pretty good. That's a pretty good. Yeah, it's synopsis, one of the better ones. As far as the nopsi go. All right, Karen, are you ready to get into it? Let's do it. The movie opens and it says rated R, Karen, but there are no other warnings that I could see. But we do have words to read, Karen. Yes, we do. It says during the 1980s, over 70% of American adults believed in the existence of abusive satanic cults. Another 30% rationalized the lack of evidence due to government cover-ups. Well, so that's 100%, Karen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> then it says, the following is based on true, unexplained events. Ooh, spooky. So I already have a question. Okay. Where did this come from? Was it on the it's news? It's made up. It's made well, up. No. Oh, it's you think the statistics are totally made up? Too? Made up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. But still, there was satanic panic in the 80s. There was. There was. I could see it happening now with social media, right? Somebody just posts something and everybody shares it and gets all cray cray about it. Yep. But where did that come from? Was it in newspapers, magazines, news reports? What was the deal with that? I don't really remember it. Oh, I do. <laughs> was it childcare centers or something or. Was that a different one? I don't know, but I remember it. What do you remember about it? It being a thing. <laughs> okay, it was a thing. Yeah. All right. Everything I was Satan. Everything had something to do with Satan. You but know, was it like Kiss, the rock and roll the band, music? Yeah, the band Kiss stand for Knights in Satan's Service. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wished. <laughs> okay, so it was just people making shit up then. It's interesting how prevalent it was. Like it I was said, spread through conferences presented by religious groups, Karen. Imagine that. Oh, there you go. Of course, you know, they always get on the news and spout whatever they well, want. like you can see like the Hocus Pocus 2 came out and there's the moms in Texas saying that if you let your kids watch it, they'll be converted to to Satanism and things like that. But that's social media silliness. So I was just wondering how it was so prevalent. Because it was a thing. I guess I just wasn't the right audience for much it, like the, You know, much like the witch hunts, you know, Sam witch hunts and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, I bought into it right away. And I was like, wow, 70%? How did I miss that? But okay. You're right. It's probably not true. <laughs> I'm looking for data, Karen. I'm not really finding any. But apparently there were 12,000 unsubstantiated cases of satanic ritual abuse in the 1980s. People abuse or animal abuse? I know there's lots of animal abuse. Probably both. Probably both. All right. Well, we none, really... none of the claims were able to be substantiated. We've really hooked the listener now. So maybe we should start. <laughs> yes. Movie opens and we see, just as your synopsis described, Samantha looking at an apartment. It's a nice place. It is. And the landlady kept comparing her to her daughter. So she's going to cut her a break, I feel like. Yeah, she liked her, but she did use the old, I showed it to someone else this morning. But she so didn't like want her. It, yeah. And she, she agrees yeah. to waive the down, the deposit, deposit and all that shit. Yeah. And then we have credits. Because she has a good feeling about her. And that's a famous actress. Who was that? That was Dee Wallace, Karen. She has a brief appearance, but. From such movies as Cujo and The Howling and others <laughs> then we have credits and while the credits are playing we see samantha walking with her walkman as cheesy's 80s music plays karen it is we should mention that she it's 300 dollars for the apartment and she needs the 300 the first month's rent so d wallace by monday waves, and it's yes. wednesday yeah she waves the deposit Basically, Samantha doesn't really have money, so this is a big deal to her, but she wants the apartment. Yeah, she's a college student. But yeah, she's listening to her Walkman, cassette tape Walkman. She even had the little orange foam things on her headphones. 
So I think I had those shoes. They looked like Puma shoes. I yes, remember them. I yeah. had Pumas as well. It appears she's on a college campus. She's walking through a building, and I assume it's her dorm. Question yeah, mark, what, I wrote. Yes. And there's a sock on her doorknob, Karen. Bummer. The old sock, <laughs> the universal symbol. And it's a big tube sock. Karen. Yes, it big, is. Long, knee-high tube sock. <laughs> With stripes at the top. That means something. If it's a longer sock than a... No, a shorter sock doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Does it mean anything? Does it mean something special if it's a long sock? Like an Not to me. As opposed to an ankle sock. <laughs> Does it mean something to you? No, I was curious. So she apparently has to go out and walk around the campus some more. <laughs> She's not happy. Heather won't come and answer the door. No, it's morning, she says. And she finds a posting that says babysitter needed. On a bulletin board. Remember yeah. the bulletin boards? Yeah, she walks past it, then comes back and takes the number. They had all the phone numbers cut so vertically. Yeah. yeah, they vertically, and they were in strips, and you could just tear it off. Which people got smarter later. It used to be just the phone number, and then you'd get home and you had a phone number, and you know you didn't know what it was for. But then people started to say mm, like yeah. "drummer wanted," and then the number, so number. you knew what it was. It's true. But those were everywhere. They were. That's how you communicated back in the day. I remember going to Fazio's, Karen, the grocery store. <laughs> okay. And there'd be a bullet board there with all those stuff. There were it. bulletin boards everywhere. There were. There are still Ranks, some around. Kmarts. <laughs> but looking for, just for that, for babysitters, offering babysitter services, needing babysitter services, pet training. Everything, bands, that's how everybody put things up Yes, when they were looking for something. So Samantha goes to the payphone. I made a note that she dials the number using her knuckle. <laughs> Do you see that? Because she's a germaphobe. Oh, that's bit. what we find out later. Yeah. Yeah. So the phone rings and there's a machine. She leaves a message. And she gives her dorm number as a callback number. But as she's walking away, the payphone rings. And she walks over and picks it up. And apparently it's the guy who's looking for the babysitter. You must have caller ID, Karen, back in 1980. Yes. Ooh, or star fancy. 69. Or what was it that the callback <laughs> oh, number yeah, that's is? True. That's true. I don't remember. Never used it. And the guy wants to meet her like right now. Outside student affairs. So Samantha goes back to her dorm. And now I, wrote, uh, her, I know why she's looking for an apartment. <laughs> the sock's uh, gone. But her roommate is a slob, Karen. Yes. Half yes. the room is just shit thrown everywhere. And the other half is neat and pristine. <laughs> and it's always harder for a neat person to live with a messy person than a messy person to live with a neat person. Because the messy person doesn't give a crap, but yeah. the neat person does. And then in my day note, is it like going to be Christmas break or something? Because I, I think I hear like conversations that she's walking around and waiting for the guy to come about Christmas, the church or whatever, the tower, when it rings, it's playing a Christmas carol. Yeah. So it, it probably is. She was in a jacket and a hat. I don't know where this is taking place, but it, it could be. Connecticut, I believe, Karen. So it would be cold. So we see her sit or waiting on the steps for the dude, but the dude never shows. He's a no show. Well, it was filmed in Connecticut. I don't think it really says where it happens, but. Yeah, she waits. They It's a little bit of a montage. They show her sitting, lying down on the steps, kind of sleeping the whole. She's waiting and he blows her off. Next, we see Samantha having lunch with who we learn is Megan. And they're talking about they're the talking apartment. They're talking about the apartment. Yeah. Yeah. And Samantha's wondering where in the hell she's going to get the money. Megan well, says yeah. she's got time. And she says, let's just call my dad. He'll give you the money. Right. Which if someone's going to give you money, take it. <laughs> you can always pay it back later. You don't have to be that proud. Then they decide they're not thrilled with the pizza and they get up and leave. And Megan pulls out her Marlboro Light 100s and so <laughs> starts to light one up. Yeah, Samantha doesn't eat the pizza. No. And Megan only takes a couple bites and she says the pizza's bad today. And then we're back at Samantha's dorm. Eventually, she goes into the bathroom and turns on all the sinks. She goes into the bathroom stall and she sits 
and cries, Karen. On the toilet, yes. Which was weird. I thought she was turning on the water to get the warm water. I thought we were going to get a shower scene or something. But no, she just turns them all off. I guess that's so no one will hear her crying. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Did you, you did used not, to do that? You did not turn on the water or flush a toilet when someone was taking a shower in the dorm. We're not where I went. You always had to yell, shower, before you did anything like that. Because if you didn't, whoever was in the shower was going to get burnt because <laughs> it came out scalding hot because you're taking all the cold water. But anyway, she goes back to her. This is the first room. time she tells herself to get a grip. Yes. She says that a lot. She sees herself movie. in the mirror and says, get a grip. Yes. Goes back to her dorm room and the roommate tells her she took a phone message for her. It's from some guy. Some guy. I don't know. Some guy put the number on your desk and she, she eventually finds it, calls it, and he wants her to babysit that evening. He said he found one girl early this morning, but she was unreliable. So she wants her to babysit that evening. And he offers to pay her double to do so. Which is a hundred bucks. Did you ever babysit? Not really. Do you know how much I made when I babysat? 75 cents an hour. A dollar if they were being extra generous. And I started babysitting when I was pretty young. A dollar I mean, just an hour? In- so you're only babysitting for like four or five hours, right? Usually? Yeah. 75 cents sometimes. No matter how many kids there were. Now you have to pay like 20 bucks an hour. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> know your worth babysitters so now we see megan in her car karen and she's listening to the greg kin band yes remember the greg kin band karen i believe I it's the breakup song. song it is the breakup song <laughs> i do remember the song i recognize it immediately that's the greg kin band on the radio when they're talking about the eclipse on the yeah. radio yes so Morgan's going to take Samantha to the house because Samantha got into a car. And it's out in the middle of nowhere. Right. So they drive out there in their 1984 Volvo 240 DL four-door sedan, Karen. 1984. That gives us a timeline. This is late in the 80s, probably. Yeah, and her roommate who came off a little... I don't know what the right word is, goofy or ditzy or something, is a good friend. We find out here in a few minutes. Are you going to ask me about the damn car? Mm -hmm. Damn it. Okay, Karen, what did a 1984 Volvo 240 DL four-door sedan go for in 1984? Average retail price. $12,582. It's not bad. They're still over though. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it was eleven nine sixty. So you're about five hundred dollars over, right? I got the cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Karen, you know the next question. What's one go for now? You want to mm-hmm. guess the high, the low, or the average? Just throw a number out and I'll tell you that's, where you are. <laughs> that's like making me choose which pocket I'm going to put the eight ball in. If it goes in a pocket, it counts. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not telling you. All right. Then just give me a dollar figure. 8,542. You're way high. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Aren't they good, safe cars? Uh, that's what they say in the movie, Karen. <laughs> the average high, Karen. $2,075. Wow, really? Yep. Hmm. Probably because they're a pain in the ass to work on and get parts for and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, that's probably true. But anyway, Megan takes her out to the house and hear more about the eclipse, and Megan offers to stay with her. Yeah, she says, I don't feel comfortable dropping you off in the middle of nowhere. She says she had to look it up on a map, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> she had to she look also it up says on a map. She was, yeah, appalled by that. And she um, also told her that she took down all the signs. Yeah, she did. They talked about that at the pizza place. If you take down all the signs, then you'll for sure get the job. Or you know you'll what? screw the guy over. I did that not, once. For not showing up. There was a an ad for a student helper in a 
research lab and I went on all the floors and I went and answered it. And then I took down all the ads so no one else would apply. I did get the job. Oh, okay. Well, that's all that matters. I thought it was rather clever and I admitted it. I said, I'll put them back if you want me to. And he said, no, you're hired. <laughs> and they do drive past the cemetery, Karen, which they lingered on. So I made a note of. <laughs> yes, they did linger on it. So they get to the house, ring the doorbell. A very tall man enters the door, I said. That's what I said, too, because they both look up. They have to raise their heads to see him. He holds on to her hand for a very long time, I made a note of, when they get introduced. Yeah, so it's Mr. Ullman, and he invites them both in. He looks very happy as they go into the house. And they sit and chit-chat for a while. And he's an older gentleman, we should say. He's bald and... Walks with a cane. Then he asks to see Samantha in the other room alone, Karen. Yes. He basically tells her he cannot pay for two babysitters. He's only paying for one person. And Samantha says, oh, yeah, that's fine. She's just dropping me off and going to come get me. Which is a is a total lie. I can't afford to pay two people. And then when he tells her he's going to pay her, he keeps upping the price he's going to pay her. So he could have <laughs> easily paid them both or could've. whatever. Then we cut to Megan eating candy in the room, in the living room or whatever. Some of it's not very pleasurable. The old candy dishes old people used to have out. So then Mr. Ullman explains to Samantha that he wants her to babysit his mother-in-law. There is no child. Right. And Samantha's like, I don't think I can. I don't know anything about that. You know, caring for elderly and. He tells her that she won't have to do anything. It's not, you know, like, you know, there's any medical reasons or anything. She's, they just want someone there in case of an emergency or some shit. And he says it's just like babysitting. And he keeps offering to up her pay. Well, she tries to leave and he says, what will it take? He's yeah. willing to pay another $100. That's $200. Then he offers her $300 for one night. And he yeah. says, it's so important. And she says, okay, $400. $400. And he agrees. So, Karen, saying what you just said about what you got paid babysitting. (laughs) (laughs) She got a hundred times what I would have gotten. So would you have taken it? Um, With 1984 of you taking $400? I probably would have insisted my friends stay. So I would have gotten us both killed. (laughs) Okay. I probably would have taken it. (laughs) I probably would have taken it, but I don't think I would have taken it alone. Okay. Would you have taken it? Probably not. I mean, that reeks of desperation. I know how it feels to need (laughs) money, to have like $2.12 in your bank account and need money for that Monday. So (laughs) in that situation, yes. But I probably would have wanted to see the the mother first to see what. What does it take? Right. Like, prove to she, me there's a mother here. And well, n- not even that. Just prove to me that it's not going to be hard. Like she's okay. You know, like I'm not going to have to change diapers or suck fluid out of lungs or you know, like anything complicated. And then I probably would have said, only if my friend stays, because yeah. she had already offered to stay, Megan. So it's not like you're putting her out either. And he's desperate. Yeah. So next we see Megan and Samantha walking back to the car. Megan's leaving and they're arguing a little they're bit. They're arguing. Megan tries to talk Samantha out of it. Because she says it's too good to be true. She's like, yeah, you, you we said if it was creepy that we would leave. It's creepy. <laughs> That's what Megan yeah, said. but she wants that cash dollars. Yep. So Megan agrees to pick her up at 1230. Yeah. Samantha says this one night changes everything for me. <laughs> everything. Which it does. Yes. So next we see Megan driving down the road and she goes to light her Marlboro Light 100 and her, her Bic is out of fluid, apparently. Did she hit something? Why did she pull over? I don't know. I don't understand I, that either. But I she, when her Bic doesn't light, she stops the car, pushes in the lighter on the car, right? Yeah. Where you plug your cell phone in now, kids. Yeah. It used to be a lighter. <laughs> and she rolls down home. the window and sits there. Well, she's going to smoke. I get it. I she's think waiting she had, for the lighter to pop out. I think she had Virginia Slims. I'm just saying. But <laughs> no, they were Marlboro Light 100s, Karen. I'm telling you. I but know I don't a, know, I know why what she... I talk about there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't know why she pulled over. She pulled into the cemetery. Did she? Yeah, because you see her car later. Oh, okay. But I couldn't fit. I did not rewind it to see what happened. But I think she hits because she goes, are you kidding me? And she pulls in and then she starts to smoke or tries to smoke. Oh, yeah, there was a, there was something like that, like a thud or a bump. Or, yeah. So I don't know what I happened. I don't know if she had engine problems or she hit something. Maybe she got flat. Yeah. Who knows? But she um, pulls off the road into yeah. the cemetery. A man comes up and lights his Zippo for her. and Scares the fuck out of her. And me too. Yeah. And she's asked, Jesus Christ, where did you come from? You, were you hiding or something? And they have this little conversation. And he says, he asked her if she is the babysitter. And she says, no, that's my friend, Samantha. And boom, shoots her right in the head. <laughs> yeah, like shoots her face off. So I have, why did she stop? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> he shot her right in the face. She go. And he takes her cigarette. Which I thought was a nice touch, yeah. actually. I think he took the whole pack because he's later smoking the same yes. ones. But he took the one that she he lit for yeah. her. Right. So right. I was like, that was chef's kiss, you know, <laughs> like that was good. But I was. There'd be some, you know, brain matter or something on it. But oh, whatever, it'll be fine. It, that got me. I couldn't believe he did that. Then he gets in the car. Yeah, he gets in the car and takes a cigarette, right? So next we see Mr. Ullman and he pays Samantha half the money in advance. Just to calm her nerves. And he says his mom is asleep, but she's able-bodied more yeah. than him because he's walking with yeah. a cane. Probably and... won't even see her. Yep. And he suggests, you know, there's a, I put the number of pizza place on the refrigerator. If you like pizza, I know how you college students like pizza. There's a number on the fridge. And he gives her the number of where they'll be. And then he says, make yourself comfortable. And she does. She sits down on the couch and puts the number that he gave her in her back pocket. Then Samantha meets Mrs. Ullman. And they chat. They chat a little bit. Nothing too weird, I don't think. The only weird thing is Samantha is confused because she thought she heard Mr. Ullman talking to his wife upstairs. And right. Mrs. Ullman comes in from like the kitchen or something. Or so she was a little. Or whatever. Well, she says she was downstairs getting her furs is what she says. Yes. Because she can't get used to this cold weather. They're from the desert, you know. Yes. So then um, Mr. Ullman comes down and says, oh, good, you've met, blah, blah, blah. And again, as they're leaving, reminds Samantha about the number for the pizza. Yeah, don't forget the pizza. Then we cut to a shot of the moon. I guess they're trying to show the eclipse is moving across the moon or whatever. And when then we see Samantha calling Megan on the rotary dial phone in the kitchen, Karen, with the really super duper long cord. Yes. <laughs> Megan doesn't answer, so Samantha leaves a message. She apologizes. She says, if you're mad, I'm sorry. And she says she'll call her back later. Next, we see Samantha ordering the pizza. Orders a medium pepperoni pizza, Karen. Yes, and they ask for the address, which she doesn't know. So she has to go over with the long cord yes. over to her backpack and tell them what the address is. Pizza guy says, see you in 30 minutes. Next, Samantha starts exploring the house. And that goes on for a while. Yeah, the, she finds a room <laughs> with a pool table. There's an old-timey organ. She plays a few notes. Turns on the TV. It's the Channel 13 News, Karen. And, of course, they're talking about the eclipse. And Frightmare Theater is up next, Karen. The news is on with an eclipse. And it's a total lunar eclipse. So let's talk about lunar eclipses, Greg. Go on, Karen. Do you know what a lunar eclipse is? I do, Karen. <laughs> All right. Well, let's tell anyone who's listening who might not know. Lunar eclipse. Can I answer correctly and get a ding? You can. When the Earth passes in between the sun and the moon. So yes. there's no reflection. Blocks yes. out the reflection of the moon. Lunar eclipses happen when Earth positions itself between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow across the lunar surface. Ding, ding, ding for you. They can yes. only occur during a full moon, which I did not know. If you're interested, the next total eclipse of the moon is November 8th, 2022, in case you want to decide to babysit that night. But I don't recommend it. Okay, cool. And you want to look at about three o'clock Eastern Standard Time to see the biggest effect. There you go. Three o'clock in the morning? Yes. Well, that ain't happening, Karen. <laughs> 
Next, Samantha puts in a cassette tape in her Walkman, Karen, turns it on, and we get to hear the fix. Yes, we do. Which I would never do. One thing leads to another. You never put on. Oh, if you're babysitting? Well, you can't hear what's going on around you. It's true, but she she does she puts that on and then she plays a little pool and then she starts dancing around the house, Karen. Yes, she does. <laughs> it was a pretty long dancing montage, but she makes a mistake. Yeah, she she breaks a vase or a vase. Like, How's she gonna hear the pizza man? That's what I said. Let's get our priorities straight. It's true. But she does, she does break a vase. A vase, yeah. is that what you said? Yeah. She cleans up the mess and then she opens a closet door that's right in front of her there. She's on the floor and finds furs and family photos, Karen. But yes, it's it, not the family she met. It's not the Olmans. She's well, how do you know it's a younger family? I thought it was that's them why and, they're not the Olmans. Well, it could have been old pictures. I thought it was them. The same vehicle that was in the Yeah. So isn't it them younger? No. It's t- the two parents and a no. boy. No, no, no. Completely different family. How do you know? You're going to tell me later. They didn't look alike. (laughs) Yes, they did. She had dark. Whatever. Okay. We're not going to argue family. Even she said that's why she goes outside and is like trying to look around. I think she's trying to see where the photo was taken. Yes, she is. And she recognizes the fucking Volvo because they have a Volvo too, apparently. (laughs) And it's the same Volvo they got into when they left because she replays it in her mind. Right. Yes. So she's she's getting suspicious now for real. Oh, I thought it was just them younger, and that no, was they just uh-uh. had the same car. Nope. Well, she's also sub- well. It's nineteen eighties Volvo, Karen. Not the one they're getting in. That's a different one. Yeah, no, but I think it's still a nineteen eighties Volvo. In the old, it's picture. a red, it's a red wagon, but it's a I feel think it's a eighties okay. Volvo. I thought it was just an older one. Okay, I get it. You're right. So it's like a '50s Volvo, Karen, because these people know. are old. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. She also gets suspicious because the woman, the wife, said that she was downstairs getting her furs, but when Samantha opens the closet, there are furs in there. Yeah. But she could have a lot of furs. Right. Who knows? So as I said, she goes outside, and I think, as I said, she's trying to line up where the photo was taken, and then she stares at a. Chevy van, Karen. <laughs> yes. That wasn't there <laughs> Not quite before. like the one I had, but yeah, it's a Chevy van. This one looked a little more custom. It did. Mine did not. Then we see the feet of a man snuffing out a Marlboro. That he stole from Megan. Maybe. We don't know that. We assume that, though. Greg and I are both so excited that you're listening to the Scary Spirits podcast. And we would love to hear from you. Do you have a movie suggestion for us? Or possibly a favorite drink you'd like us to try? Or maybe you just want to say hi. If so, you can email us at info at scaryspirits.com. Thank you so much for your support. Now back to the show. Next, we see Samantha trying to call Megan again. No answer. So Samantha's starting to get freaked out now. So she grabs a knife, Karen, from the kitchen and goes to the bathroom. She does line the seat with toilet paper. She does paper. line the seat, yes. Because she's a germaphobe, yes. which I don't really get. That doesn't really play into the plot that much, but okay. Oh, that's interesting little thing. It gives her a little tick, you know. Yeah. And while she's in there, I think she hears footsteps, Karen. She hears something. So she finishes and goes to investigate. She comes out with the knife ready. She's walking through the house again with a knife. and She's afraid now. She is, she goes upstairs and she kind of knocks on the door, says everything okay in there. There's no answer. And she doesn't know what's behind the door, but we are shown what is behind the door, Karen. Right? We yeah. see three dead bodies, like a mother, a father, and a son. Oh, is that what it was? I thought it was Megan and like the babysitter from the morning and gotcha. Okay. And then I wrote, there seems to be some symbols on the rug too, which I. Devil symbols. Is what couldn't make out. Yeah. Exactly. I completely missed that. I thought it was the babysitter from the morning. All I saw were bloody bodies, but you're right. That's exactly what it is. Then hear a doorbell, which I thought was a phone at first because it. It's like an old timey doorbell. 
Mm-hmm. It rings. But it's a startle scare, Karen. Were you startled? Of course I was startled. <laughs> so she runs downstairs, grabs the 20 off the fridge. She throws it at the pizza guy and grabs the pizza. <laughs> I said, I don't think that's the pizza guy. <laughs> the real Throws it at the guy and says, keep the change and closes the door. Then we see it as the same guy who shot Megan. And he is now smoking her cigarettes. I made the yes. note. She makes a couple of calls here. And I don't know what, what the deal is. She calls one and it's like disconnected or it does like the. She's gong, freaking gong, out. Gong, 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 yeah. So sound. she tries. She pulls the number from her back pocket. She's going to call the Omens okay. and say she's afraid she wants to leave. Okay. You know, she's freaking out. But that gets the. This number is no longer in service. Right. So then she tries to call 911. So I didn't see that. I couldn't tell what she was dialing. But then she just hangs up and then 911 calls her back because they used, you know, to see if there was right. an emergency. And she apologizes and says no. And she tells herself again to get a grip. Yes. And she's going to have some pizza now. So she starts to eat the pizza. And I said, I don't think it tastes right. No. <laughs> Judging by And she starts her to reaction, watch TV. And she starts to watch the horror movie on TV. Do you know what the horror movie was? I do not. Do you? It was uh, Night of the Living Dead. It was when the blonde was woman it? was getting, they were all <laughs> at her oh. at the, okay. what was her name? Barbara? Barbara. Yeah. It was very brief. I would never have recognized it if we hadn't just watched it. She turns it off wisely she throws the and she throws the pizza out she only takes a couple bites of it yeah and i thought what is is the pizza drugged because she's washing out her mouth with water with and she water doesn't like... yeah but she so hears she's noises gonna... coming from the sink too she puts her head down to listen to the sink like it's making weird noises i don't know but she didn't eat a lot of the pizza kind of like rosemary and rosemary's baby didn't eat remember they wanted her to yes. eat the moose yes and she didn't eat it so she only ate a little Right. So I would be doomed because I would eat the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, again, I think that situation where they thought she was going to be more drugged than she actually was. But, yeah, she does hear noises in the sink, which I didn't get that. I didn't either. But she goes to investigate. And she starts exploring the house again. Does she have her knife? I think she has her knife, doesn't she? She goes into the upstairs bathroom and pulls back the curtain. It's very suspenseful. She's in the upstairs bathroom. She goes over to the sink because she hears water dripping and she feels the sink and it's dry. Yeah. And, and she then she as well and then to the she drain. She hears it. Yeah. And then she hears the dripping of the tub. Oh, okay. And then she walks slowly over to the tub <laughs> to pull back the shower curtain. Slowly. <laughs> and she pulls it back and we see she is repulsed. We don't know by what. And then we get a shot of. The bathtub is full of black hair. Yeah, I didn't get that either. Clumps of black hair. Where'd that come from? I don't know. Did they no idea. skin the, the mother that they killed and make a wig for the other lady? Because she don't pulls know. a... It was weird. Don't know. But yeah, it's just a bunch of gross clumps of dark hair in the tub. The so next, Samantha goes up to the third floor. And she's walking up towards the door and... Just as she's reaching the door, the light bulb bursts. <laughs> and all the lights go out of the house. All go lights go out in the house. Then we cut to the moon again. And the eclipse is now fully realized. Almost. There is no moon. And we see movement behind the door, from under the door, right? We yeah, she's, light she, and through. she's really scared. And then I think she's drugged, Karen. Yeah, she, she starts going all like weird and dizzy. Woo, she gets a little... <laughs> Yeah, she's woozy. woozy. She basically falls down and passes out. Yeah. Next, she wakes, and she is tied and gagged, Karen, laying on top of a pentagram. Yes. Surrounded by candles, beautiful candles. Red and black. She's screaming. The almonds enter, all wearing their cloaks, including who we now should know as Victor, the son. Did you know his name was Victor, Karen? I did not. It's Victor. And Mother enters. We see Mother for the first time. She looks kind of like a witch, Karen. She I Just said she saying. looks like she looks like the Blair Witch or something. She's <laughs> she's she needs some night cream. <laughs> she she's hurting. So Mother 
then draws a pentagram on Samantha's tummy there in blood. And it's there's kind of like a strobe light effect. It's not constant light. I don't know if it's supposed to be the flickering of the candles or what, but there's kind of dark light, dark light, dark light. It's creepy. When she comes to, I thought it might have been her heart, her heartbeat, you know, like yeah. flashes. But that's kind of how the rhythm of it. Well, it would be yeah. faster if I was tied to a pentagram, but <laughs> it's it's very rhythmic. That's why I thought maybe it was like a slow strobe, you know, mm. just flickering. Then mother places a goat skull on her tummy there, slits her wrist and drains the blood into the skull. The mother slits her own wrist. Yes. She draws something on Samantha's forehead. Then she forces Samantha to drink the blood from the skull. Yes. Yeah, so she poured, that was a lot of blood. She's pouring She's it in the top of the skull and it's coming out the mouth of yes. the skull where it would be and well actually it's just well it's flowing through the skull she's, she's pouring into the base of the skull she's got the skull upside down and it comes through the nostril yeah of the skull basically right yes and she's, it's she's using it like a little lamp or a little ladle or a little yes a, a grave what's the gravy thing gravy boat gravy boat <laughs> gravy boat <laughs> it is like a gravy boat of blood in a ram's skull and it's a lot of blood and they pour it and she can't not drink it because she's spread eagle basically tied in this circle and gagged. and gagged. And so the blood goes directly into her mouth. But somehow Samantha breaks free, Karen. Quickly. Yep, she scratches mother's face with one hand. Then she unties her other hand. And her legs. She stabs Mr. Ullman with a knife does. that mother used to cut her wrist. Yes. And as she's running past Victor, she puts her thumb in his eye and gouges his eye out. <laughs> yeah, I was. I said, you weren't going to like that. You don't funny. like I, that. I, I, I was more squeamish when Mother was slitting her wrist, honestly. Yeah, that was pretty gross. She started doing it, and I had to like, I had to like, I had to almost looked away, but they didn't show really any of it. But and so it's just, she runs to the kitchen and she trips over Megan's body when she's in there. Blood everywhere. Yeah. She they slips must... sliding through the kitchen on blood. Megan's blood, yes. Yep. She grabs a knife. From the pizza box. It's still there. Yep. Runs upstairs. Victor follows her and ends up shooting her in the shoulder. She stabs him first. She gets him in the stomach. And then she runs upstairs and he's following her. And then he goes up a different. So she's running up one side of the steps and he comes up the other like a servant's entrance or something and shoots her. And she just like makes a makes a slashing move with her hand and ends up slitting his throat. And he bleeds out. Yeah. yeah. He gone. I'm like she's a badass. She's lucky. <laughs> so next Mrs. Ullman goes after Samantha. Well, she finds her son. Yeah. And she she's goes pissed. after Samantha. She's pissed now. Yeah, and Samantha keeps seeing images of mother flashing her head. So she's she's still like drugged from the blood or some shit right or in shock or something she can't get it out of her head that's right mrs Ullman grabs samantha and pulls her into like a room and tells her that no matter what she does she can't stop it now it's too late it's gonna work in spite of you you little bitch that's right and she goes over to like a octagon window and looks up at the moon or some shit and starts praying but the moon, it, so there's light in the window. It it's is. an eclipse. There shouldn't there be any light any there. It was weird. But she it says, is. tell me what to do, Lord. But the, Talk to me. The full eclipse has passed, so it's... Not yet. That happens later. Oh. There might be a little light, but not That's as right, much as... because I make a note about it later. But she's asking the Lord to talk to her in the window. She takes off her wig. She's got little bits of hair. But she's not watching Samantha. That's right. While she's standing there, Samantha stabs her right in the back. Yep. With the knife. Like they picked the wrong chick to mess with. And she go. Samantha runs downstairs back to the kitchen phone with the really super duper long cord hanging on the wall. And she dials 911. And she's still seeing flashes of the witch, which yep. I thought was totally creepy. 
the witch was getting worse and worse every time she saw her. So I didn't know if it had something to do with the blood that was inside of her or what. Yeah, that's what I thought. So she runs out of the house. She throws up too. She vomits. Yeah. Mr. Roman comes back, comes out there going after her, and he's got a knife in his gut still. Yeah, I was surprised he didn't pull that out. He, well, he does right outside. He does. He starts dripping blood as he's walking, following her to the cemetery, Karen. And I said, oh, shit, Megan's car is there. And I didn't even notice that. I noticed, I remember there was a car there. I didn't really make a note that it was Megan's. And Mr. Ullman tries to speak with Samantha. He tries to reason with her. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking a new approach. <laughs> yeah. He, and the he's going to come clean, come... going to come clean and reason with her. You know, the say, eclipse you know. is finishing. Yeah. Yes, he, he says he has chosen you. It is your destiny to accept him. And then we cut to the eclipse. And I said, is the moon a happy face? <laughs> it looks like there's a happy face on the moon. I didn't moon see eclipsed. it. Okay. But she screams no. And he says, kill me if you want to. I'm just the messenger. Right. So then Samantha turns the gun to her head and shoots herself right in the head. And of course he cries no or whatever. And then the news comes on. and then Next. Had a black screen for a little while there. And then we get a TV news report again, Channel 13 News. And apparently the lunar eclipse was quicker than expected, Karen. Scientists are baffled. Yes, they are. We find we are in a hospital, Karen. Yes, from a point of view as we're walking through the hospital. We see Samantha in a hospital bed, her head all bandaged up. Didn't it look like when she shot her head in the cemetery, though, that her brains blew out? Yeah. I mean, I thought I saw that. I thought I did too. So there's a nurse in there, you know, doing whatever they do. <laughs> she put something in the IV bag, which put about yes. 20 bubbles in it. That's like, true. That's yeah. not good. But <laughs> then the nurse walks over to her and pats her head and says, oh, you poor thing. And she says, well, all we hear, we see Samantha's body on the bed. And we hear, don't worry, you're going to be just fine. Both of you. And then the nurse comes over and pats her belly. Credits. The end. Yeah, I have questions. Yeah, well, it's not a good film if you don't have questions. <laughs> Go on. Well, my one of my questions was, who were the people in, in the room? The dead people, which you answered. You answered that one. How is she even alive with her brains blown out? I don't know that. Maybe she's fucking brain dead. We don't know. Could be. But she says you're both going to be fine. And maybe she missed all the important shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That was weird. Maybe she'll have to learn to walk and talk again, but other than that, she'll be fine. <laughs> and I was just wondering how they knew she was chosen because the first I see, I thought that was the first babysitter dead in the room so that it wasn't that person wasn't appropriate. I didn't get how. How Samantha was chosen. I didn't get, was she going to become the mother then? Is she going to be the witch? Was the mother still alive? Because we never saw her end. You know, we saw everybody else. Samantha just like scratched her face or face. eyes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But was she still around? And the old guy could still be around too. And then it's the same kind of thing where Everybody, there's all these dead people in the house and she's covered in blood. So why, why did they have to believe they were attacking her? She could have been attacking them and she's going to wake up and talk about satanic stuff. And well, she's got a traumatic brain injury, Karen. <laughs> well, now, yes. <laughs> we're not going to see her waking up. <laughs> but I don't know. The whole time I'm thinking when she runs out, that's one of the things about horror films where you're the last girl. Everybody else is dead. Who's to say you didn't do it? Mm -hmm. You know, especially when it's satanic panic. But they always just end up in the hospital or something. Because you always overthink it, Dr. Karen. All right. Well. <laughs> this film was directed by Ty West, Karen. I think it was written by him, too, wasn't it? Written, directed, and yeah, edited. edited. Yeah, there. I saw. And he's kind of a big deal now. You know, he did the... Dr. Craig, right, talked about him and talked about the film X, mm -hmm. about the people shooting the porno on the farm and all that stuff. And now there's a prequel out called Pearl to X, and he's kind of a big deal now. There were nice touches in it, I thought. There were, yeah. All right, anything you were very 
pleasantly surprised by or really enjoyed in this film? Like I said, there were nice touches in it. Um, there was good shadow work on the stairs when she was going up the stairs, even when she was carrying the knife, you saw her shadow with the slats of the stairs and it looked really cool. You know, overall the special effects were pretty darn good. Megan's face was blown off. The blood looked real. Um, The stabbings, the eyeball. I mean, he just said, Oh my eyeball. And he popped it out, which was, I thought it was well done for the budget. You could tell it was low budget and there were very few actors actually in it Mm -hmm. um but it still was suspenseful i liked and didn't like the slow burn you know i did like the suspenseful buildup, but i was also getting frustrated by it like how many more rooms do we have to go in (laughs) you know okay she's dancing i get it but do we really have to dance all over you know do we have to dance in every room of the house like i almost feel like it was just enough you know what i mean because we got we got Megan, we got her death, then we got the dead family. You know, it didn't make it seem too awfully long for me. That was I was rewarded with something, Karen. True. <laughs> but it was pretty slow. Her in the house exploring the rooms was And I liked watching her dance. You know. That was well, fun. Yeah. She's a good dancer. <laughs> was there are there things you liked about it? I liked that. Karen, if I didn't tell you this was made in 2009, when did you think, when would you say it was made? Late 70s, early 80s. It felt very, it felt time period. It was set in the 80s and it, everything was spot on, right? Yeah, yeah. The look, everything, even the credit, the look, everything, right? I was surprised when she had the Walkman that she didn't have to do the pen and wind the tape. Like I thought for sure it was going to get stuck in the Walkman and she'd have to do the winding because that was very, something whenever you see a Walkman, you had to do that. And I thought, yeah. oh, it's going to get stuck, but it never did. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting. The clothes, every, the look of everything. was The feathered hair. Yeah. The whole dead gig. On 80s. Yeah. I, I dug the slow burn. Like I said, I it seemed just about right, you know, because we were given something, little things here and there. Murders and mayhem. From time to time. Well, I was watching the time and I'm Keep thinking. Keep us from getting bored. Any second now. Because it was getting pretty Startle close scare to here, startle scare there, yeah. you know. Yeah, I thought she was, I mean, she was in the entire film. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. and I thought she carried it well. She was a little jumpy even before she went in the house, but she turned out to be a total badass when it came to survival. Yeah, so she her film career started in 2008, and this one came out in 2009. She won Scream Fest Award for Best Actress that year for this film. And she hadn't really done a whole lot, but, you know, mostly horror films, it looks like. But I thought she was good. I, I agree. I thought she was good. I thought she was really, I thought all the acting was really good. She was good. Megan was good. They're all good. And there's only like five characters in the whole damn thing, right? Right. Yeah. They. I thought <laughs> it was, yeah. Part. And it all takes place basically in, within 24 hours. Soundtrack was good. True. All right, Karen. Anything you didn't like about it? Well, like I said, I liked the slow burn and didn't like the slow burn. Yeah, it's Got a little much. A little long for me. A little long. I have, there were, I have questions, like I said, Where's the mother? Probably didn't help that we were both like under a deadline trying to watch this and saying, come on, how much longer? (laughs) Well, yeah. How many more rooms does she have to go in? Come on, come on, come on. Speed it up. But yeah, I I don't. And I really honestly don't understand who. I mean, I guess it's supposed to be the devil, but we don't really know. There was no like in Rosemary's Baby. They. I kind of like that it's left kind of open. Like you don't really know. I kind of like that. I mean, you kind of get that. Well, it's just questions. I mean, I get the ram's head and the blood that kind of really. Don't you like movies that, you know, you walk out of there and like, you're like, okay, so. No, I kind of like, I like my things wrapped up. Okay. Like, like, what's that witch doing? And where is she? And where's the dude from the cemetery? The guy, because he could have survived. If she survived with half her head gone, then he probably survived. Because he was talking when he was trying to reason with her, he was 
talking to her normally. But overall, I, I really liked it. I'd never heard of it, and I thought it was really good. Okay, good. I liked it too. I'd heard of it, and I, I basically what I had heard is that it's a slow burn, suspenseful kind of what I knew or what I was reminded as I was watching it. Like, oh yeah, this is the slow burn, suspenseful film. <laughs> I think you're right. I think he nailed the time period. I think he nailed being a college student, having an annoying roommate, wanting a an apartment, being a person and showing that there are people with money and people without money in school together, you know, and how different your experience can be in that situation and being desperate for money. You have money, you can wind up dead. Well, you only because you have friends, you're friends with people who don't. (laughs) (laughs) But just knowing, I know that feeling, like I said, of having $2.08 in your bank account and needing. Or less, Karen. Yeah. I know the feeling of having negative numbers in your bank account. (laughs) I I never really had that, but I got so close, (laughs) you know, and knowing that desperation. And I think all of that seemed very real. So I agree. I thought it was a believable. She made it believable as a college student. I would suggest it to anyone. Yeah, I I think it's good. Yeah, especially if you're familiar with Ty West's more recent work. I don't know. I haven't seen any of his recent work, though. Maybe you can compare and contrast. All right, Karen, what kind of cocktail rating do you want to give this film? How many cocktails did it take you to get through it? It's probably a two. Okay. I think it's a... Mostly because it's different in, you know, it's not, it's not all slasher. It's not all suspense. It's got aspects of both of those things. It's not, you're not expecting like in the slasher movies, every time you open a door to have someone dead in some way. And I think it's relatable. And I, I just thought it was good. I thought the special effects were good. I thought, you know, I think, I think the moral of the story is ask more questions If you're going to babysit. Or if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Right. So what did you think of the Satanic Panic cocktail, Karen? I do like it. I have a lot left. Yeah, I think we were talking more than we were sipping. Yeah, talking more than sipping. I like it with the ginger beer. So it's the same as adding a little soda water, like you said. A few sips ago, it was very strong, but I've since stirred it, and it's much better. (laughs) Well, I think the dark rum and the ginger mix well with the lime. I think it's a good flavor combination. I put a little extra mint leave in mine, too. Yeah, I left out most of the mint because I'm not a big mint fan. So I don't really, it doesn't have any fanciness that would make it a satanic panic, but it is good. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, not sure of the name thing either, but yeah. Maybe he was playing on the spices from the dark rum or something and the Maybe. ginger. It's a little spiciness, I guess, but it's got a little kick. The ginger is what puts the little kick in there, I think. Well, and this the dark rum has spices too. So Yeah. All right. Anything we learned today, Karen? Uh we learned about Volvos, <laughs> <laughs> lunar eclipses. Oh yeah. When's the next one? I told you. November eighth. I think. Lunar eclipses. Anything else? Well, there was the Greg Kinn band and the fix. Lots of 80s references, right? Sony Walkman. Puma shoes. Should have looked up how much Walkmans and all that shit were. They were like 15 bucks or 20 bucks, right? 15 to 25 bucks. You think? Back in the day. You think so? When they first came out, they were kind of pricey. Until all the knockoffs came out. That's true. Holy shit, Karen. <laughs> I wish I still had my 1984 Sony Walkman. Why? Are they on eBay? Yep. <laughs> How much are they? Like 700 bucks. Yeah. Wow. But 1984, they were about 40 bucks. I was going to say, I bet they were... I was going to say forty nine ninety nine. They were expensive when they came out, the the Sony ones. And then yeah. as time went on, cheaper versions came out. Yeah. Invented in 79. 
it was a huge deal. I remember running miles and miles and miles and carrying one of those things in my hand because uh, it remember. had a little strap. It had a yes. strap on the side. Yes, Karen. I remember riding on buses on band trips and listening to them. <laughs> Did not do much running with them. <laughs> Well, the, when you ran a lot and you had the, so you'd have like a mixtape for a run. But you were on the cross country team, Karen, right? We should tell people that. Yes. But you knew how far out <laughs> you were by what song you were on. So it was True. kind of depressing. So it's nicer when they came out with MP3 players and you could mix it. Like you could hit a button and it would mix because then yeah. you were like, oh. Yeah. Because if you had, out, if you, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you had a store bought cassette of an album, you knew when it was time to, Hit the eject button. You were what, 15, yeah. 20 minutes in. Right? Yeah, you yeah, knew. So. <laughs> you knew what mile you were on by what song was playing. Yeah. They made a big difference. That was a big difference because running and or riding the bus for long periods of time where you could listen to your own music was huge. You didn't have to talk to anybody. Awesomeness. <laughs> yep. And actually, my wife and I just saw the fix recently, Karen, in Lexington. Same lineup. Yep. And were they good? They were good. It was one of those things that my wife dragged me to, just like I drag her to like Iron Maiden and shit like that. But yeah, it was fun. It's nice that you support each other. Yeah. I drag her to Columbus. She drags me to Lexington. Whatever. Sometimes I'll drag her to Nashville. Whatever it takes. But she kind of, yeah, she kind of enjoys it. Especially if I'm there. Well, then it's a delightful trip, Karen. <laughs> of course. Then she's like, yes, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, all the original, the original group. And actually, I never realized, I never really listened to the lyrics of one thing leads to another until I was at the sh concert. And I walked out there and I told my wife, I'm like, wow, I didn't know they were so political. Like all of their songs are very political. I didn't even get it. You know, but as long as 80s. it's got a jazzy beat, it's all <laughs> it's fine. All right, Karen, anything else? Are we ready to move on to next week? I think we are. Okay. I believe next week is your choice, is it? Is it not? It is. And what film are we going to watch next week, Karen? We're watching a film from 1968, Greg. 1968. Okay. It's called The Witchfinder General. Mm, Witchfinder General from 1968. I seem to remember Dr. Craig talking about that on Wicked Ramblings Horror Academy. And that's exactly why I picked it. I was wondering. Is that why you picked it, Karen? It is why I picked it. He had high praise for this Starring movie. Starring Vincent Price, right? Yep. So I thought, I'm going to listen to The Professor, and I'm going to watch one of the have, movies that he highly recommended. Have you tried to find where you can watch it yet, Karen? No. Can you not watch it anywhere? <laughs> you can watch it on YouTube. Okay. It's not available as we speak on Amazon Prime. If you look <laughs> for it on YouTube... The title may be something completely different, but that is the correct film. So let me tell you what it is. Do you know what it is? No. Okay. So in the United States, it was called something different. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is British? Yep. British horror film directed by Michael Reeves. Remember Dr. Craig talking about yes. Michael Reeves? I think this was the last film he made before he OD'd or something. So Witchfinder General... In the United States, it was released as the Conquering Worm. What? <laughs> the Conquering Worm. So okay. But if you look up which Finder General full movie, the Conquering Worm will come up on YouTube. I think as the top selection. So that's weird. Are we going to understand that after we watch it? Don't know. Well, I've never seen it. I don't. You haven't seen it either, right? I have not. I don't think. I don't know. I may have. For some reason, Vincent Price looks familiar to me in that old Puritan British, kind of outfit. Puritan outfit, yeah. yeah. So I don't. Know. I agree, but I don't know if it's a different movie or not. <clears throat> well, maybe we're thinking of the Conquering Worm, Karen. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> <laughs> the old Conquering Worm. Yeah, I've definitely. Oh, I've seen that one. That title just draws you in. It would be a movie that I would look at thinking it was like attack of the killer tomatoes or something i think oh the conquering worm let's see what that's about yeah do we have a cocktail for witch finder general karen we do i hope it fits because the conquering worm makes me think that maybe not but 
I found it on myheavenlyrecipes.com. It's the witch's brew cocktail. Would you like to know the ingredients? I would. You're going to need one ounce of vodka, half an ounce of lime juice, two ounces of raspberry liqueur, two ounces of Sprite, one teaspoon of silver cake shimmer, (laughs) one drop of purple food coloring. And the picture has a maraschino cherry. This is absolutely not the one I have. There are a lot of different witches brew cocktails. This one just has a lot of ingredients that we already have. Does it? Yeah. Vodka, lime juice, raspberry liqueur, Sprite. Mm -hmm. The shimmer you don't need. But didn't we have a shimmer in one? Remember? It might have been. We had uh, edible. Glitter. um, Glitter. Yeah. Green edible glitter. And. A drop of food coloring. So you could make purple it food coloring. You got to make your own. Does it tell you how to make it? You just can't buy purple food coloring, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Red and blue. All right. I bet you can buy purple food coloring. But the shimmer and the food coloring aren't 100% necessary. Yeah, you can. Apparently Kroger does have neon coloring kit. Well, you only need a drop. Jesus it's very Christ. light purple. It looks pretty. I think it would be a neat drink and we have the main ingredients so whether you put the shimmer and all that that's up to you but all right anyone you need to thank this week karen as always i'm going to thank our listener there's a lot of podcasts out there thanks for spending time with us what about you greg well i need to thank the youtube subscriber seeking for commenting on our video a positive comment positive comment i think was it sarcastic and you didn't know it? <laughs> I don't know. Could be. Oh, she said, I think it's a she. I don't know. <laughs> they said they lived on the coast of Maine. Remember, we talked about Maine, most Stephen King things being in Maine, and this is in the corn. Is fields. there corn in Maine? Yeah. Oh. And they say there's definitely a feel here. <laughs> a field? A feel. Feel. Oh, a feel. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Seeking. Yeah, we got a lot. The only reason I say it's a female is because the avatar is like a little sprite. Yeah, we got a couple of comments on Children of the Corn. People definitely remember Malachi. (laughs) He's memorable. Of course, also, I need to thank the band Verse 13 for providing all the music in the Scary Spirits podcast. The music does make the podcast better. Anything else, Karen? Please drink responsibly. Yes. Thanks so much for listening. Want to keep in touch? Check out our website, scaryspirits.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Scary Spirits Podcast. Find us on YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast. If you have questions or comments, you can email us at info at scaryspirits.com. To help us grow the podcast, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know, we really do appreciate your support. And as always, please drink responsibly. Thank you.